Hi everyone, if you're new, this is a short series talking about AAVE, African American Vernacular English, and if you're coming from another video, welcome back. And I suggest you guys watch my last video which talked about the structure of AAVE, specifically sound and grammar. Today's video is going to talk about the use of AAVE in society, and I'll specifically be going over classrooms, courtrooms, literature, and churches. The first segment I'm going to talk to you guys about is the use of AAVE in classrooms. So back then, AAVE was not really well responded to in classrooms and there was poor attitudes toward it, which led to a lot of black kids losing out on their education and a lot of the work and tests that were given to them were all catered to the white students and how they could read and write and speak compared to the black students. And also, when the black students would try to ask for help, they were ignored from the teachers because the teachers were unaware of AAVE or they were unable to accommodate them because they didn't know how to help students who spoke AAVE. And what I just described to you are actually events that has happened before the Ann Arbor decision in 1979 and then the Oakland Ebonics controversy which happened in 1996. So the resolution of the Oakland Ebonics controversy actually led to AAVE being declared as a dialect of English and it was first declared as a language but there was huge disapproval among many people about it like that so they changed it to it being a dialect of English and then they established programs to help students learn how to write and talk in standard English and AAVE. The next segment that we're talking about is courtrooms. So you and I both know that African Americans have been hugely discriminated against in the judicial system and one of the ways that they do that is through AAVE. They pick apart the person's language use and they use that to discredit the person and this happens more often than you think and it's actually because of the stereotypes that follows AAVE, like a sign of not being intelligent or even representing one's social status. And an example of this is the Trayvon Martin case, where his friend Rachel Gentile went to testify and her language use became the topic of the media and public scrutiny. And even the defense lawyers used her language use as a way to discredit her as a witness and sadly it worked. They deemed her testimony as incomprehensible and not credible just because of the way she spoke. That's aggravating, that is annoying, that's discriminatory, but whatever. And they didn't see nothing wrong with it, they wiped her testimony completely and they went on with the rest of the case. But sadly, this probably still happens present day, but Basically, AAV in courtrooms, it's not a pretty thing. Um, depending on your language use, they may try to discriminate against you be just because of your language. And they also might even try to make more judgments on you because of your ethnicity or your race. And that's why people try to style shift their language use or code switch when they go into a courtroom to lessen the chance of this happening. I'm going to specifically be talking about black poetry and how it corresponds with AAVE and that is through vocabulary use, historical figures becoming central words in black poetry, historical markers and place names, and use of AAVE features. And a poet who utilizes these is Maya Angelou and in one of her poems called Ain't That Bad, she actually uses an AAVE feature in all of the first stanza of that poem where most of the words are turned from ing to in. So an example is dancing is turned into dancing. So it's more of a phonological feature 
but you can also see it because the way that she writes it, she puts I-N and then an apostrophe to show the abrupt ending of Nochi, just the I-N. And another example is a poem called Still I Rise, where she demonstrated a call and response technique in her poem, which is a common thing in black churches. And I thought it was a pretty unique thing to do and pretty unique to read actually. And I'll leave the poems in an article talking about her use of AAVE and her poems and down below. And if you wanna read that, you can. But like I was saying, there's plenty of more examples in Maya Angelou's work. There's also more examples in other poets' work like Paul Dunbar or Langston Hughes' poems. But in summary, the dynamics of AAV have become integral to the production of black poetry, while black poetry has becoming a defining muse for the practice of AAVE. Now with the last segment, I'm going to be talking about church language and I'm going to give you guys the textbook definition of it. African American church language refers to a distinctive sub-variety of African American language used in markedly sacred contexts. Markedly sacred context is just referring to the Bible or any church talk. But African Americans do have artistic components to their speaking and this follows them into church and in black churches an artistic performance pulls everything together and actually in the audience it increases the use of AAVE features. And black churches are distinct because of the way that they involve their consistent use of AAVE, the audience participation, musicality, and artistic performance, and improvisation all into one church session. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and share this video. I would really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments. I do not mind responding to them. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day or night. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.